Alrighty. Got the other mount to the frame here installed. Got the back one put on. All the frames done. Gooseneck hitch is bolted in, welded in. The door for the gooseneck frames in. Got the headache rack diamond plate in. Got the back tacked on. I ain't welded it yet, but it's tacked on. Still got to cut the lights and everything in, but ain't got that far yet. Fixing the go out here and get another piece of diamond plate and get it cut out and put on one side. Okay, we're putting the putting, fixing to put the floor on. It's 80 inches. The diamond plate comes in four by eight. So take two 40 inch pieces if you want it to be centered. Just put it against your front piece, take your piece of chalk, mark it out, and cut it, and then you cut your trap door hole for your goose trap. And with any look, it fits. But when I look here lately, it won't fit. Like this piece here, didn't fit. I'm not supposed to show that, but I did. I didn't show that on the video. But I did. <laughs> I'm honest. What are you saying? I'm not. I don't know. It fits. These are the steak pockets that I ordered for a trailer project I'm working on, but I'm going to use them for this just to order some more. These are the 3 sixteenths. They make them uh, eighth, and eighth would probably be fine on the truck, but like I said, I had them, so. You can take regular channel and do it. It just won't, this will accept a two before, and you can take this is four, this is three inch, this is four inch. You do it. I've got factory built trailers with this on it, works fine. But this is what we're going to use. You just figure out what your spacing will be down the trailer. And you just take your stake pocket, figure out your spacing. This is three sixteenths. Two inch flat steel. And you go like that down the side. It's called a rub rail, stake pocket, whatever you want to call it. But uh, that's what it'll look like. Alright, got an update on the flatbed here. Just got my clearance light holes cut out it should be a little little three-quarter light like that It'll be three of them and one one on each side and of course can't put them in until I paint it just got the hole cut for the and mountain holes drilled for the uh, trailer plug I still got to, I cut this piece off here. It was just a little plate that bolted to the bumper of the truck where you could put balls on the bumper. But I cut it off with the plasma cutter. When I take the bed off and paint it, it's not gonna be welded to the bed and the truck. I'm gonna weld it, put the bed back on, and I'm gonna tack a piece. I'm gonna take a piece of diamond plate and come down and let it lay right across the top of the hitch there. And then it'll come back up over here and cover all of that. Sorry, I had my finger over it. It'll come down, come across here, and go back up. And just cover all of that across there where you can't look back up under there from behind it. And we got the, 
Got the gooseneck door on, all welded up. Changed my mind on the light boxes. I didn't put lights in here like I was going to. I made boxes for both sides. They're just tacked up there. And I put the center pieces for the headache rack. I wasn't gonna put anything, but half the people said it looked okay. Half the people said it was too open, needed something, so. I just put a, some uh, one by two in the middle, just tacked them in there, and then I, when I pull the bed off tomorrow, I'm gonna weld it all so I don't mess the cab and the back glass up welding. <laughs> Got the toolboxes, they're not going here. They're actually going under here. I've got my holes drilled and that's what that bracket right here is for. That'll go, the toolbox will go up against that and back against that and bolt to that hole. And then there's a hole here and here. And the toolbox will come, come up under there and you'll just put your nuts on the bottom of it. Got the filler neck on. Comes down. I ain't got no clamps or nothing on yet because, of course, I got to pull it back off to paint it all. But we're getting close. And the same for that toolbox over there. It bolts up the exact same way. But the, the plans are to get all the tools off of it, of course. Because <laughs> right now it's sort of turned into a workbench. Uh, take the wire brush on the uh, grinder and go all over it. And get all the any kind of scale and little places like this where it's starting to rust a little bit. I seen another place that was there some on the just from where I sweat and touch it and just clean all that up, wipe it down with some uh denatured alcohol or lacquer thinner or something, and then I'm gonna spray it with Ospo and then I'm gonna have to set a day or till it dries and put it out in the sun about eight to ten hours. And then you just take a, you can take a brush and brush it off, but I normally just take a water hose and wash the Ospo back off. And then uh, dry it and wipe it back down. And then I'll uh, take the spray gun and uh, spray it. And then it'll have to, have to dry and then I'll put two coats on it. But it's, it's coming around, and the reason I use the Ospo, the of course that's not enough, but it's a stops rust and prepares rust to surfaces for painting. You can put it on rusty metal. You just get the majority of the rust off, and it uh, stops the rust. Turns a white looking sort of a powdery color and you just wash that powder off and then it won't rust anymore. And you can spray new metal with it. On my other flatbed, I sprayed it before I painted it. And the places it's got chips and stuff where the paint's been knocked off of it. It's no rust, it's just the metal looks shiny like that under it. It won't rust unless you Saying the Ospo back off, but it's it's some pretty pretty bad stuff to breathe. You need gloves and a mask, but it it does the job. Like I said, you don't want to get it on you, and it it's it's some pretty pretty rough stuff, but it gets the job done. But that's that's where we're at now, and like I said, I'm gonna pull it off tomorrow and get everything welded up. I got a 20, 30 minutes worth of welding. And then I'm going to uh, start getting her ready to paint. 
probably show a little bit of the painting, not the whole thing, because I'll be by myself and I can't paint and hold the camera and mix paint and hold the camera and go mix more paint and it's just it's aggravating. But we'll definitely show some of the process and then of course when I take the bed off I have to clean the frame while I brush the frame up. It's not rusty. It's just you know, got dirt and little little surface rust here and there just where the paint's got knocked off of it. But and we'll paint all that and put her on there and I'm ready for a trailer or two. I'm <laughs> getting tired of working on it. I'm ready to use it. But that's where we're at now. Got the truck ready for the bed. Got it all painted and cleaned up. And we're in the short rows. If I can just get a couple afternoons of sunny weather without thunderstorms, I can get it get it painted and put on and see how it does. But for now, I'm going home, see my little girl, and eat supper and rest. And I'm also working on some metal saw horses or saw benches, whatever you want to call them. But uh, just some quarter inch round pipe. I don't know, that might be three eighths. It's heavy. I can't tell. Just some standard wall three inch uh, channel. And it's just tacked together now. But. Over here's the other one. It's just tacked together too. And I have to fix and cut this tubing down here. One inch tubing. I'm gonna put it between the legs on both sides and then run a piece coming up like this just to give it a little support. And I've been needing some wooden ones would probably do fine no heavier than that bed is but i have a all kinds of stuff i can sit on it and i wanted something good and stout to, if you want to put an eye beam or i have a new dump truck bed right out there i have to get put on that truck and i have to have somewhere to sit it while i'm working on the hinges and stuff and getting it ready to go on. So, been needing some for a while, so there they are. Well, I did get it off the truck. I got all the welding underneath done, but I didn't get it ospoed because it's fixing the rain and I don't have time to pull it outside and let it dry before I back it in the in the building because if you let it drip on the floor the ospo takes a takes the sealer off the floor and it makes a, a nasty white spot but I got it all shined up and ready to be ospoed So we've got the flatbed painted and we've got the lights in. They look very nice. We had a little bit of a mishap on this one. The uh, case cracked and broke, but the uh, supplier was nice enough. They're going to send us a new one free, which is always nice. And then Nathan is working on wiring up the lights up here. Do you have anything to say about it? It's hot. It's hot. 
Well, tell us what you're what you're doing here. Just trying to feed the wire down through, catch it from the bottom so I can <clears throat> tie it into the wire things. 